Alright guys, it's one one here and today I'm going to be teaching you how to build a simple, cheap, resource efficient iron farm. Now you might be saying that's an oxymoron, that iron farms are neither sim simple, cheap or particularly resource efficient, but this one has a slight difference. We are going to be using a groundbreaking new technique for stacking multiple villages into a single cell. Now, if any of you have done uh, any iron farming before, you'll know that sounds a bit implausible, but trust me, it is possible. If you want a more detailed explanation as to how this actually works, you should check out another one of my videos. Uh, link will be on screen now. Anyway, uh, this video, is, we're not going to go into any of the technicalities, we're just going to go into implementation. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so first thing you're going to do is go to your spawn point. And this is where we're going to build in. For reasons I'm not going to go into in this particular video, this thing has to be built at your spawn point. I understand this might be a deal breaker for anyone who's playing on a big public multiplayer server, but if you're playing with just a dedicated group of friends or maybe in single player, then that shouldn't be too much of a trouble. Uh, I repeat, you cannot build this anywhere but the spawn point. I will not be held responsible for anyone who wastes a lot of time building this somewhere other than the spawn point. So, once you've found your spawn point, uh, it's time to get building. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to tower up about 20 blocks. Now uh, this doesn't have to be exactly at your spawn point, it can be within probably 30 to 40 blocks would be the safe limit. But uh, I'm going to build it right at the spawn point just for safety. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to tower up, like I'm doing here, to a point where there's no obstructions in any directions, uh, no hills or buildings or anything like that. Uh, then what you're going to do is you're going to build a 21 by 21 plate. Uh, you can use pretty much any material for this, you could even use wood, but we are going to be using lava for the killing mechanism for the golems, so it might be prudent to use something other than wood. Alright, so once you've got your 21 by 21 base plate, you're going to build a 3 high wall all around it, just like so. And once that's done, you should end up with something like this. Now what we're going to do is we're going to put water into this. I'm going to start by putting four blocks in each corner. This is not completely necessary. If you've done this before, then you probably can skip this step. But uh, this is just helpful as a guide to make sure that there are no mess ups. So what you do is you put your four blocks in the corner and then you fill this row here with water. Now if you're in survival, you can place a bucket. Use this as a source to place the next bucket and so forth. But as I'm in creative, I can just whack it down like this. So you're going to put all the water in like so. And then you're going to do the corners. You should see that it meets all in the center, obviously. But now it's time to do the corners. And you're going to remove these four blocks and then place a water source here. And you do that for each corner. And as you can see, it forms a nice continuous flow with no dead spots. So once all the water is in, it should look something like this. Now you're going to do as I do here. Build three, uh, two high wall, three long in from the corner. Then you can leave six blank. One, two, three, four five, six, build another three, leave another six blank, build another three, and you're just going to continue this all the way around until you have uh, gone all the way around the setup here. And once all that's done, it should look like this. Next up, we're going to build the second spawning floor. Now all you have to do for this is put in another 21 by 21 floor, just like this. Be very, very careful not to fill up this area though. Alright, so I've done that, and as you can clearly see, I have not put any blocks here, because we're going to need to put some doors here later on. Anyway, the next step we've got to do is we've got to add a wall to this so we can put water at this level as well. And we're going to do this very simply with a too high wall, doesn't need to be fancy or anything like that. Be back in a second once this is done. Okay, once your too high wall is on, all you need to do is put the water into this floor exactly the way you did the floor below. Okay, so I've gone ahead and put all the water in. Now what we need to do is we need to build the plates where the doors are going to sit. And to do that we are simply going to build out in front of each of these door sections, like so. And we're going to build out four blocks. So one, two, three, four. And just continue this all the way across. And again, we're going to do this on every single side, because obviously we need doors on each and every single side. So, I will be right back once that is done. Okay, so with all the door plates now on, it should look something like this. Next up, we're going to build the holding cells for the villagers. So we're just going to build out three here, 
and then we're going to add a two high wall to this. Now I'm just going to put the villagers in here with spawn eggs, but if you were doing this in your legitimate world or on your legitimate server, you would use a minecart from a nearby village, or you'd bring the villagers through the nether to get them here. So you'd put them into this area, uh, four in each of these areas, and you would wall off all but the two ends, like so. Oh, I just walled up the end there. Then what you do is you put water here, and then you go over here and put water here as well. And then this way you can seal them in completely, and they are completely safe, and they won't glitch out because the water prevents them from pushing each other into the walls. Of course you have to build and populate one of these villager cells for each of the four corners. Now, as you can see I've just got the, the four villagers in each one, they're just bouncing around in there. And those guys are simply going to make this a valid village, or valid villages, should I say, uh, eligible for golem spawning, which is very important. So now for the fancy part, which is going to allow us to put more villages into this cell and thus make it much faster than a normal one. And it's very important that you do this exactly as I say. You're going to take a stack of 64 blocks of your choice uh, that you've been using to build this, and you're going to go 64 blocks out in this direction. Okay, so I've now built 64 blocks away. What you're going to do now is you're going to build a little 3x3 three three area here. You're going to put a two high wall around it. And you're going to put a villager in it. Now, again, I'm using a spawn egg to put him in there. But if you're in survival, you're going to want to bring him over with a minecart. Just drop the minecart in there and leave him in the minecart. So, once that's done, uh, you need to do this again. Three more times. One for each side. So I will be back in just a moment once I've done that. Okay, so once that's done, you should end up with an odd starfish looking thing like this. Anyway, now is the time to make sure that any nearby villages have been cleansed because we don't need any more villagers now. So if you have, um, if you've just gotten to this point and you've been using a village that's very nearby to fill this thing up, then you're going to need to go to that village and remove all of the doors because you do not want that village interfering with this thing. Okay, so once you are completely sure that there are no nearby villages or wooden doors to mess this thing up, it's time to begin the defining of the villages. And this needs to be done in a very specific order. So what you're going to do is you're going to pick one of your limbs first and you're going to label it limb 1. And then you're going to go to the very end and you're going to build a little door set up like so. Just a little block shape like that with a door in it. Basically what this is doing is this uh, villager is now looking at the door because he sees it as a valid village because this door sees more skylight on one side than the other. I'm not going to go into what the game considers as a house at the moment, but uh, just take my word for it and do this. So once you've done that and you've labelled it 1, you're going to go to the next one. You're going to label it 2 and you're going to do the same thing and then you're going to label the next one 3 and do the same thing again and so forth until you've gone all the way around. So, I'm going to go ahead and do that now. I'll be back in just a second. Okay, so I've defined, defined each uh, little outer village in order. So this is one, that's two, that's three, and that's four. And provided these are labelled, you can't really go wrong. So the next step is a fairly easy step. We're just going to put doors in all of these sections going all the way around. Alright, so we've got the, the centre doors put in. Now what we need to do is we need to bring these outer villages in, and that sounds a bit weird and a bit complicated, but just do as I do. So first you're going to go to the branch you labelled for, uh, because this is the newest of the outer branches that you built. Uh, you're going to build two blocks out here, and place a door there. And once you've done that, then you move to the middle, and place another ring of doors outside this one. You might be saying, 101, you can't just add more doors to it, that's not going to make it faster. But this is uh, utilizing uh, basically an extra mechanic, well, an, a little known mechanic of Minecraft, that when you place a door that's in range of more than one village, it will end up belonging to the oldest of the two villages rather than the, uh, rather than the nearest of them, which is a bit strange. But that is just the way it works. So uh, I'm just putting in this ring of doors. Uh, once you've done that on this row, you can break this intermediate door here 
and then you do it for number three. And once you've done it for number three, you do it for number two. And once you've done it for number two, you do it for number one. And just to clarify what you do here is you put a little two block thing there, place a door and then add the ring. So yep, you're going to do that in reverse order. So four, then three, then two, then one. Uh, I'm going to do this off camera, obviously, because it's a bit of a tedious thing to do. But I will be back in just a second. All right, so all of the uh, villagers have been brought to the center. And we have all the doors in. Uh, if you've been following along with this in survival, then I applaud you. I commend you for your patience. You must be the most patient builder ever, because uh, this project is quite infuriating, just moving the villagers and all that. But uh, it's not time to celebrate just yet. We still have a few things that need doing. For example, monsters can still spawn here, and you might be thinking, uh, there's a door there, they can't spawn inside the door. But the fact of the matter is, a uh, monster will spawn anywhere where his bounding box is not interfered with. And obviously I can stand here, and my bounding box does not intersect with these doors because I can move, so a mob could spawn there. So what we want to do is we simply want to uh, put some sort of light source. I like to put them above. Uh, you could use torches, but if you want to be absolutely sure, then just light stone over it like that, and that pretty much protects it completely against any spawns. So I'm going to go ahead and do that to each set of doors, and then I'm going to show you how to build the killing mechanism. Okay, it's time for the final part. Now, I've simply marked the center using a pair, just a hole going straight down through the middle. But once you get down here, you're going to build four little lines coming down from the ceiling, surrounding a 3x3 three three area where the golems drop down. And that's actually sufficient to hold the golems in because they are 2x2 two two at the bottom. Then what you're going to do is you're going to build a ring around this like so. And this is, uh, this is going to control the redstones, which, which control the pistons that prevent them from falling into the lava. So you're going to put a ring like that, you're going to put the redstone on the ring, like so. Now you're going to put pistons on the ring behind these blocks. And now you're going to do a standard torch tower coming down from this corner. So. Uh, very simple, alternating torch and then block, like so. And this is going to allow you to control whether or not these pistons are extended from down there. So if I just uh, get a button quickly, you can see that if I attach the button here and push the button, the pistons open and then close again. Okay, so now that we have a little valve that the golems can build up on top of, we now need a mechanism that's going to kill them when we press this button. Now uh, you can clearly see that the golem's going to be stuck on top of those blocks and when we press the button they're going to fall. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a dirt cheap, quick and simple lava killer. So we're just going to build this tube all the way down to the base, like so. Nothing fancy going on here. And at the very bottom what we're going to do is we're going to have a water stream for collecting their items obviously. So we're just going to build this shape, as I do here. I'm going to replace the ground with brick, just because that's professional. So that's a very simple water stream set up. Now we put a sign here, and two water streams... Whoop, uh, that's not what I intended to do at all. Anyway, that brings all of the items which fall here to a point where we can simply pick them up. Now we need a mechanism that actually kills them, so we're just going to use a straight up lava killer. So we're going to raise this little wall up, another two squares, like so, nothing fancy. And we're going to put signs in here. And what these signs are going to do is they're going to hold up the lava, so the lava doesn't uh, contact the water and cause troubles. So once you've got your grid of signs in, you can simply place the lava down and it will flow out over the signs. Now any iron golem that falls into the lava is going to burn and die and because he is uh, three squares tall his head sticks into the lava and he takes damage. And his items will come out here for you to pick up and enjoy. So last thing that needs doing now simply break these holes so they are three by three so Mr. Golem can fall down. So I'm just going to quickly do that. And uh, now I'll demonstrate the thing working. Now this will take a little while to kill them. But they will die and their items will come out and you can pick them up. So there you go, a fast, cheap and very effective iron golem farm 
for your single player world or private multiplayer server. Again, if you want to build this on a big uh, public server, you might want to get permission from the administrator first or uh, get some protection for it because it might get wrecked. But other than that, it's a very nice design. I think it's perfectly viable. So yeah, that is about it. A couple of other notes though. You can stack this vertically before you ask, because I know someone will ask. You can build another one of these 70 blocks or so above, and then another one above that, of course, for even more spawning power if you really need to. But you don't really need to, because this thing will continue to work even when you are away from it. It'll uh, continue to spawn golems when you're tens of thousands of blocks away, because the spawn chunks in which it has been built, in which it has to be built, uh, never unload, so it'll continue to work even when you're not there. So that'll be about it. I will leave a download link in the description for this particular uh, save file so you can come and take a look at this. And uh, I also suggest if you want to know a bit more about how this whole village stacking thing actually works, uh, you check out another video I made called entitled Iron Golem Hyper Spawners, which goes into a bit more detail as to how all this actually works. <coughs> so yeah, that'll be about it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and of course a rate, comment or perhaps even subscribe for more epic builds and tutorials in the future. That'll be it for today. I will see you guys next time.